In this recording, we look at the relationship between shine x and cosh x, with a particular focus on how we can solve for one of these two quantities if we know the value of the other one for a given value of x. And the standard definition of cosh x is it is a half e to the x plus e to the negative x, and shine x is a half e to the x minus e to the negative x. And a useful identity that relates them is that cosh squared x minus shine squared x equals 1. So let's have a look at examples of finding one of these quantities, given we know the other one. First, let's look at finding shine x if we know that cosh of x is equal to 3. So once again, we would start off by writing down our identity. Cosh squared x minus shine squared x equal to 1. And when we say cosh squared x, that's the same as saying cosh of x squared. That's what that notation means. And similarly, shine squared x is notation for shine of x, all squared. So that means we're substituting 3 in here to give us 3 squared minus shine squared x equals 1. That's just 9 minus shine squared x equals 1. Therefore, we get negative shine squared x equals 1 minus 9, subtracting 9 from both sides. And that gives us negative shine squared x equal to negative 8. Dividing both sides by negative 1, shine squared x equals 8. So algebraically, that should then imply that shine x is plus or minus the square root of 8. But when we're looking at something involving functions, we also need to consider not just algebraically what we expect the solution to be, but whether it actually agrees with the property of the function we're looking at. And an approximate sketch of y equals shine x, it has this general appearance. So in fact, you can see that is reasonable. y equals shine x does indeed take both positive and negative values. So if cosh x is 3, shine x is plus or minus the square root of 8, Let's look at a second example, finding cosh x if we know that shine x is 4 fifths. So once again we'll start with our identity, cosh squared x minus shine squared x equals 1, means if we know one of them we should be able to sub it in and find the other. So here cosh we don't know, but we're given shine of x is 4 fifths, so shine squared x will be 4 fifths squared that's going to become cosh squared x minus 16 divided by 25 equals 1. So that's going to become cosh squared x equals 1 plus 16 divided by 25, giving cosh squared x equals 25 over 25 plus 16 on 25, which becomes 41 on 25. So algebraically, you'd think that would mean that cosh x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 41 on 25. But is that correct given the property of the cosh function? And if we think about cosh x, cosh x we saw is a half e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now e to the x is a positive number and so is e to the negative x. So that means that cosh x is always going to be positive. In fact, the lowest value it actually takes is when x equals 0, when you get a half e to the 0 plus e to the 0, which is 1. So in fact, the graph of y equals cosh x actually looks like this. So therefore, going back to what we're solving for, cosh of x cannot be negative square root of 41 on 25. It must only be the positive branch that is valid here. So cosh x is square root of 41 on 25, or simplifies to the square root of 41 divided by 5. So those are a couple of examples of using the relationship cosh squared x minus shine squared x equals 1 to find the value of cosh x or shine x when we know the other one of those two functions. The main thing to be careful of being that if you're finding shine x, 
it can be positive or negative, whereas cosh x is always positive.